Someone that everyone finds it so hard to believe writes their own songs is Ariana Grande. Even though she's confidently boasted to you all that she writes her own checks just like she writes what she sings. She may be the best songwriter in all of pop music right now, but you just didn't know it. Ariana Grande is rebranding and not everyone is happy about it. And no, she's not dyeing her hair again. She's rebranding as a songwriter, letting us know to respect her pen. She's demanding respect in the lyrics that she's writing on that album. And she's also demanding respect by telling everyone that she is the one who wrote them. Let's look at why this rebrand is happening right now, why certain fan bases want to discredit her, and what other artists you think write their own songs but actually don't. Also, my name is Patty. I'm the professor here at Pop Culture University where you learn everything going on in the world of pop culture. And today's lesson is Songwriting 101 and the women in the songwriting business with an emphasis on Ariana Grande. So subscribe before we get into it. Enroll to become a student here and like the video. I'd love to get to 2,000 likes. More than last time, we got like 15,000 views on the last one, so let's keep it going. So Ariana Grande is rebranding to a songwriter and certain fan bases on Twitter may tell you that that is a lie. Folklore Stan 132 may disagree with that statement, but it is absolutely true. Billboard even posted an article with the title, Ariana Grande's songwriting prowess is to be highlighted by Spotify with a dedicated playlist. And the title of the playlist is Songs Written by Ariana Grande, Miss God is a Woman Herself. And they implored that it's important to shine an equal light on Ariana's catalog of songs, both as an artist and as a songwriter to help amplify both sides of her artistry. I absolutely agree with that. And I love the man who wrote this. The playlist sheds a light on Ariana Grande's talent in the studio, along with other artist projects that she's written on, like Motivation by Normani. I mean, her only song ever. So Ariana Grande is basically carrying Normani's career. Save Your Tears remix by The Weeknd, she wrote on that. Ice Cream by Blackpink and Selena Gomez. Met Him Last Night with Demi Lovato that she just wrote for her. She gifted to Themi because, I mean, Demi Lovato's, Themi's career was in the dump. Poot needed a song given to her. And Ariana Grande said, here, let me help you out. And it got her a little slight 15 minutes of fame, again, on the Billboard Hot 100. Quit by Cashmere Cat, Heat Stroke by Pharrell. She's written for Zara Larson, and she even wrote The Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She did not write that. But she'll even write her own verses in artist songs that she features on, like I Don't Do Drugs by Doja Cat. Well, I think we can all agree that Doja Cat does do drugs. And Rain On Me by Lady Gaga, because she'd rather be drunk, but at least she's alive. I still to this day think that's what they're saying because they both like to be drunk. Billboard has even given her the honor of Ariana Grande spending not one week, but two weeks on the Hot 100 songwritings chart. I mean, she's on the throne. If you don't respect this at this point, I don't know what to mother effing tell you. There was even a press release that for Eternal Sunshine, she wrote basically the entire album by herself. She was the lead songwriter on every single song, and she only had three songwriters help her on just three other tracks. So basically, this is like her Speak Now, almost completely self-written album. And when the Swifties got a whifty of that, they were fucking pissed. The response on Twitter was kind of mean, with tweets saying, Ariana Grande marketing herself as a songwriter now is genuinely so funny to me. Only Swifties would try to change the definition of songwriting once Ariana Grande is finally credited as a songwriter. I have to laugh. I'm going to be mean for a second here, but I honestly think it's very hilarious that this rebrand is happening because it's not even her worst attempt at rebranding. No shade to Ariana, but why are they rebranding her as a songwriter? It's funny how Swifties call this rebranding and Taylor's impact when in reality, it's just a way for her to reclaim what a certain fandom has been discrediting her for a long time. So the Ariana and Taylor uh, Marvel Civil War is still going on on Stan Twitter. Those two fan bases are really going head to head right now. I think the Swifties have gotten so comfortable being the epicenter of attention that they think anyone who could possibly take an ounce of respect, credibility, or street cred away from Taylor could potentially be Ariana if she tries to come for this crown. I think songwriting is Taylor's trademark. It really is what gives her her exclusivity in the music industry. And when Taylor made the You Need to Calm Down music video, she had Ariana featured in it, in, uh, you know, via the drag queen. And she, there was like a behind the scenes clip where she said, I know why each of us are, you know, the main pop girls. We all bring something unique. And I feel like people really think that Taylor is the only head honcho songwriter, the apex predator of pen to paper. And maybe that's why she had a little bit of beef with Olivia Rodrigo. 
But I think Ariana often gets discredited because of that whole complex of, oh my god, this beautiful girl who has the best voice in the world. No way she also writes her own songs. It's kind of the same route Mariah Carey went down, but she truly did write her own songs the whole time. So is Ariana Grande jacking Taylor Swift's swag? That is the question. Is it rebranding or is it a natural evolution of her already existing brand? Because I hate to break it to everyone, and this is the point of this video, Ariana Grande has always been a songwriter. Women often are songwriters for their whole entire career, but they get overlooked. Mariah Carey, she is, I think, the most talented musician to ever live. Mariah Carey is excellent. She's phenomenal in every sense of the word. And she's written 17 number one hits for herself. All of her songs are written by herself. But I think women don't get those flowers in the songwriting world unless they make it their whole brand. And I think Taylor was so smart for doing that because Taylor Swift, of course she's written all her own songs, but now we have the new crop of girls going out of their way to sprinkle and decorate their iconography with um, images of songwriting, like Olivia Rodrigo in all of her Spotify vertical videos, it's pen to paper, it's the guts rings surrounding a torn out piece of notebook paper, Sabrina Carpenter, her whole album was called Emails I Can't Send, as if she typed them out and wrote them herself, Billie Eilish, she had a whole documentary about making songs with just her brother in her bedroom, everyone wants to be respected as a songwriter these days, so why leave Ariana Grande out? Tate McRae, oh my god, also on TikTok, as she's you know, hopping on there after a night in the studio. I love all of her posts. And she'll come on and be like, hey, I just wrote this in the studio. What do you think about it? As if she's letting us in into the songwriting process and letting us know she's steering the ship. But she also wants our opinions on what she just thought about in her head and what um, crazy thoughts she sang into the booth that were from her own head. So people know the importance. And I do think this new trend is an extent of Taylor's influence. I really do. But not just that. I think it's also a response to veteran acts and the new wave of authenticity that we're seeing in social media and in the current state of popular culture as a whole. And I think people want their media to reflect the current culture. So people crave song writers now. We crave an authentic connection. I think nowadays we don't want to see someone who's perfectly polished and just gets up there and sings a dancey pop song like a Katy Perry or a Rihanna or a Britney Spears. I think people want to know that what you're singing to us is directly from your soul. I think this is, I think this trend is also a result of the veteran acts. We often see that longevity is coming from writing your own songs. There is a privilege you get as a songwriter. You have exclusivity, you get a deeper connection, and you get the privilege and the honor of writing, of writing diaristic, revelatory poems, basically, about your own life that maybe a record label didn't give people the ability to do if they haven't proven successful already in the past. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they might just hire a bunch of songwriters because they think it's a safer bet. And they're like, we'll have someone write the song for you. But I think people are like, no, let me master my own songwriting right now so I can actually have longevity. Because in the day and age we are, of not even 15 minutes of fame, we're down to like one minute of fame. People get one hit song on TikTok and they're never seen again. And the new pop girls just aren't having the longevity that maybe these older veteran acts uh, let's say like Stevie Wonder or Michael Jackson or The Beatles. The Beatles are the number one example. Their songs are still so popular today and they were wrote 50 years ago? 40? Mariah Carey is another example. People still clamor to her old work all the time. So Ariana has known the importance of songwriting. Having a common thread and an invisible string connecting all of your work is that it all came from you. It's the best way to guarantee your longevity. And there's some artists who, you know, they still had longevity, but they didn't write their own songs. But that's very rare to see. You would really only see that in stars like Frank Sinatra or Elvis didn't write his own songs. But back in the day, since there was like the monoculture of celebrity and they can really promote one star and give them all the best songs, they had the luxury of not needing to write all their own songs and still being pushed out to the public. But now it's you need that exclusivity of your own of your own invisible string connecting all of your songs. Do you know what I'm saying? And 
even Rihanna, she didn't write until her very last album and people say that was her best one. That's the one that people cling to the most. Ariana Grande even said that she was inspired by Mariah Carey's songwriting since day one. She just didn't outright say it back in 2013 because everyone wanted to pit them against each other. But ever since she got the feature with Mariah, she came she came clean about her lamb dumb. She claimed her inner lamb and she said, my idol is Mariah and Imogen Heap, and I feel like I'd sit somewhere in between the two of them. That's where my brain learned everything, from Imogen on the production side and from Mariah on the vocal and songwriting side. And both of them in a blender has always been my goal. Thank you. Ariana not only writes her own songs, but she produces her own songs. She is such a legit composer. I would call her like the Beethoven of our time because she not only produces her own songs, she writes her own songs, she gets in the booth and sings them almost better than maybe anyone on the planet can do so. And maybe that's why the Swifties are shaking. Let's just be honest. Because you can learn how to write a song, but you can't learn how to sing like Miss Ariana Grande, okay? Period. And I think Ariana has known that she she had her sights set on longevity from the first day she stepped in to that booth at Atlantic record labels. And she really is just a product of someone who is obsessed with music and has a deep love for the art of crafting songs. Yes, she let herself take a little bit of a backseat to the writing on the first three albums, but she was still credited on a lot of songs on those albums. She wrote on songs like Problem, Side to Side. 3435 is truly a genius song, and she wrote it. Like, 3435 is so hilarious because who in their right mind? Ariana Grande is so inspired by Dick. She's dickmatized more than anyone. So she could write literally a 10-minute version all too well about Dick. I promise you. She wrote 3435 that adds to 69. Can you stay up all night? Fuck me till the daylight. 3435. That, I mean... All jokes aside, it deserves its snaps. That is good songwriting. And it, it's so unique and quirky in a way that I think that's why it was genuinely a big hit with the crowd. But I want to highlight some of her best songwriting moments so people can just truly appreciate her songwriting. So I think one of the most impressive moments from her came on the first album. Unlike a lot of stars, she's been writing since her very first album. And that comes from the song Tattooed Heart. Uh, Tattooed Heart, she wrote by herself when she was 17. And it's honestly, it has so much personality. It has that Ariana flow and that very signature sound and that very signature daydreamy, um, like slightly sexy, slightly romantic, slightly goofy, like humorous side. Kind of, I think Mariah Carey has a very humorous side to her song writing and Ariana definitely learned that from her. She's very funny in her songwriting. And I think Taylor sometimes does take herself a little bit too seriously. And Taylor is more revered in that way because she does sit down on the piano for weeks at a time, over perfecting. She'll take two years on an album. Whereas Ariana, she kind of just has fun with it. She's relaxed. She's bouncing off of her friends in the room who she just enjoys to write the song with, her co-writers. And, you know, everyone has co-writers. Even Taylor has lots of co-writers. But I think Ariana is just, she doesn't take it as seriously because that's not what music is to her. So I think that's why Taylor is revered a little bit more. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. But I would say Tattooed Heart, she wrote by herself at 17. I think that's a song that really got her some respect in the beginning. And it didn't make people write her off as just another Disney act. People really took a step back and was like, oh, wow. You know, she's not releasing stuff like Selena and Demi and like these one-off songs like neon lights or didn't Demi and Selena both have a song called neon lights she just wasn't doing those things like she really did have an artistry and people had their sights on her because they saw her longevity from the beginning I think another crazy example of her masterful songwriting can be seen in songs like POV there's even a video of her in the studio just simply writing it with one co-writer, but even the co-writer in the room was also the producer, and she was laying on the couch writing the whole bridge then and there and pumped out such a beautiful, simple, pure, perfect pop song. And it, I always say, I think the best songs are songs where you hear it for the first time and you think, how did no one think of this before? Has no one thought of this before? Is this a cover? It's so good, you question, is this a cover? And something like POV, I wanna love me the way that you love me for all my pretty and all my ugly too, I'd love to see me from your point of view. I remember her on the Zach Sang show and she was like, 
I thought of the concept of seeing some, you know, seeing myself from my husband's point of view. And I immediately thought, oh, has anyone done that before? And that just shows the great instincts she has. Because again, she's a lover of music. And she's not like overthinking it or revealing too much. I think that's another reason why Taylor is so revered. Taylor wants to really mine every single aspect of her personal life and almost like lay like a, like a treasure map for her fans and Easter eggs to like warrant obsession and be like, go through my songs a million times and focus on my lyrics and dig super, super deep. Some may call Taylor's songs a little bit shameless because of how much she reveals. Maybe shameless gossip because she tells a lot about that boy she was with and a lot about herself. Whereas Ariana does not necessarily feel the need to do that. I think another reason people don't revere her as much is because is it less impressive to write a pop song, you know, as opposed to an autobiographical masterpiece like Taylor Swift? I don't think so. I think it's almost easier to, I mean, I'm not saying easier. That's extremely impressive. And Taylor is the GOAT. Like, she's the greatest of all time. I'm not denying that. I'm kind of just looking into why isn't Ariana even, like, considered a songwriter. It's just, like, I think it might be easier to go in the studio and just say everything you're thinking, every detail of your life, and just letting it all come out rather than have to find um, these more vague, coy, ominous words to express yourself in your music yet make it relatable to everyone else at the same time because that's like a whole puzzle within itself. So I think writing a catchy pop song sounds so easy, but it's so difficult. But Taylor is also the master of that too. I'm, and I want to reiterate, Taylor has everyone beat. Like she's in a league of her own. I'm just using Taylor as the example that like, yeah, she's the GOAT, she's the gold standard, but Ariana is um, extremely talented as well and has a lot of aspects of Taylor. So let's respect them both. Okay, so the last two examples I'm gonna give of her songwriting could be found in songs like Ghostin' and Off the Table. Cause like I was talking about earlier, Ariana really does have a common thread um, and, an and an invisible string connecting all of her music. And you can hear the story she's crafting throughout these albums similar to Taylor. I'm sorry to make everything about Taylor, but let's be honest, everything is about Taylor. It's her world and we're just living in it. But like Taylor, there's a plot to follow of her life journey and same with Ariana. In Ghosted, it's the song about, it's a beautiful song about how she lost Mac and when she lost Mac, she realized she had to lose Pete too because she loved Mac more. What a hard thing to write a song about, yet she made it vague enough that anyone can relate to it. And instead of just giving all these anecdotes in the song and these extremely specific details, she instead crafts the song to be about ghosting someone because your current boyfriend knows you like them more. Like, but ghosting still relates to her because Mac is dead and he's a ghost. So crazy how she was able to do that. Oh, she said this was so. This part was so sad for her to record. She had to get very drunk to record it. You gotta do what you gotta do. She said, "I'm a girl with a whole lot of baggage. I love you. We'll get past this. I'm a girl with a whole lot of baggage. Though I wish he were here instead. I don't want that living in your head. He just comes to visit me when I'm dreaming every now and then. And after all that we've been through, there's so much to look forward to. What was done and what was said. Leave it all here in this bed with you. Then on the next album, Positions, when she gets married the song off the table that she wrote and then sent to the weekend she was kind of questioning is it good will the weekend like this and he immediately responded with yes this is insanely good and the lyrics are about you know she's still reeling from the loss of mac and she's not sure if this new man that she has who's going to be her husband will be able to live up to the standard of what she needs because pete wasn't and that's why Ghostin kind of let him go. But this song is about her and Dalton, where we, The Weeknd plays the role of Dalton. And it's basically a song about, you know, will, will you be here for me, even though sometimes I'm, I'm going to think of Mac. And the lyrics go, will I ever love the same way again? Will I ever love somebody like the way I did you? Never thought you'd be so damn hard to replace. I swear I don't mean to be this way. But if I can't have you, is love completely off the table? Do I sit this one out and wait for the next life? Am I too cold? Am I not nice? I might not be quite yet healed or ready. Shouldn't I be going too steady? But I just want to know, is love completely off the table? I mean, that is some of the most gut-wrenching, depressing, real-as-fuck songs ever. When those two songs come on Ghost in, in my head, I sometimes have to hit skip just because I'm not in the mental state to be able to hear them. It's very sad. Oh, we also have to give some credit to In My Head, too. That bridge... She wrote that song as well. Wanted you to grow, but boy, you wasn't budding. 
Everything you are made you everything you aren't. I saw your potential without seeing credentials. And maybe that's the issue. Maybe that's the issue, yeah. I guess I did it to myself too. Can't hold that shit against you. I just thought you were somebody else, yeah. Eternal Sunshine is truly a triumph and evidence to her growth in this industry, her growth as an all-around musician, and it's so exciting to see a pop star ripen and just get to this perfect state as she's hitting her peak and being in her prime, and i am it's just so exciting to see her growth, and I know it makes her excited too because she loves every part of music, and she's literally like her own record label at this point. She's the singer, the producer, the writer. She truly does not need anyone. So in conclusion, Ariana has always been a songwriter, but let that take the backseat in the beginning to be that sexy, fun pop star that she was originally branded as. But I wouldn't say this is a rebrand. I would say this is more of a refocus where she's letting the songwriting shine a little bit more and demanding respect and saying, hey, I've always written my songs and a lot of these incredible women in the industry also write their songs and thank you guys for listening uh, make sure to subscribe like the video please like the video can we get to 2,000 likes it would mean the most and make sure you come to the next class session here at pop culture university with professor patty and i'll see you guys in the next one bye